All right, welcome to Lifestyles of the Interesting and Infamous. I'm Jolene Maria, your host, as always. And today, our guest is unbelievable. She's so <laughs> badass. You guys are going to be out of control today. All right, this is Jenna. <laughs> AKA Pixie Bruiser. Right, because she is a roller derby girl. She's just not rolling around the studio for no reason. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and how you got into it. Um, I play for a league called New Hampshire Roller Derby up in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, we have about 70 girls on our league and we have four teams. We have the um, A team, which is Skate for Your Die. Mm -hmm. The B team, which is Queen City Cherry Bombs, and that's what team I'm on. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two home teams, Granite Skate Troopers and Seabrook Meltdowns. So does that mean that you guys all verse each other, or is um, it like the, the two, the A and the B team are travel teams. We play um, other people from other states, cool. and the two home teams just play each other. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. what other states do you guys? Um, mostly New England area, but the furthest we've gone is probably Montreal. We've played Montreal. Awesome. And, um, maybe down south, New Jersey. Who's the, the most badass team there is? Oh, jeez. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, but how did you get into it? Like, I got into it um, actually from skydiving. Um, I did a skydive once at my cousin's drop zone in Maine, and um, I fell in love with the place. So I decided to start working there in the weekends. And one weekend, I um, you're talking skydive New England, right? Skydive New England. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yep. And one weekend, there was a girl roller skating on the runway, and she had a helmet on, full knee pads, elbow pads, everything. And I the the <laughs> way you see here. <laughs> and uh, I had never heard of roller derby before in my life. Really? Um, no. Not everyone talks about how it was popular in the '70s, but I was born in the '70s, so <laughs> I never saw it before. But uh, so I was intrigued by what she was doing out there, and I eventually approached her and. Um, Come to find out, it was Reckless Love Mama of the Vermont team. Mm -hmm. So um, I asked her about it, and she told me there was a team in New Hampshire that I could join if I was so willing, and I thought I'd give it a shot. I figure if I can skydive, I can try out for roller derby. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. You're <laughs> one of my idols, personally. But, um, <laughs> Thank no, you. If, you, if you can do that, like, how do you get into it? Was it like intimidating at first? You get on there, and you're like, oh, what the hell am I oh, doing? Oh, pretty much. Actually, I was just telling the story the other day of how um, they have a recruitment night, a tryout. Not really a tryout, but a recruitment night. You go and meet a couple of the girls, and they sort of talk to you about what to expect and all this. And it was at a roller skating rink, and I drove all the way up to New Hampshire um, to do this, and I got so nervous that I sat in the parking lot, freaked out, and drove back home. <laughs> That's not so, going to get you very far. Yeah, so, yeah. For somebody who I jumps out of planes, I feel like that I was, know. like, a little bit, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> not as but daunting. But I ended up saying that, you know, that was silly. So I, <laughs> I, um, I went back a couple weeks later and talked to some girls, and they made me feel better about it. And yeah, because it's kind of like a sisterhood, right? Because it's all girls, yeah, usually, it is. isn't and it? And the good part about New Hampshire was, at the time, it was open recruitment. So mm -hmm. anybody could join any skill level. They'll, they'll train you from scratch. Mm -hmm. And we still do that, but... Um, because of the popularity, um, that we have to have tryouts now. We, you know. Well, it's kind of a good thing. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. I mean, we just want to make sure people are serious about it and they, they really respect it as a sport because it is a it's a sport. Yeah, you know, so I get the question a lot: Is it real? Um, hundred <laughs> percent. No, what would it, <laughs> it be like? Possibly, you just, you just like ride around like fairies. Yeah. Like, oh. Well, I guess in the '70s it was more um, theatrical and it was planned out and they were fake fighting things like that. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't do anything like that. If you fight, you get ejected out of the game. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. there are legal hits, absolutely, and they hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the premise yeah. of the whole game is like you're going around in a circle, and somebody has to pass, right? It's or yeah. Is it like there, there's positions. Um, the the only people that can score the points are the jammers, and mm -hmm. they wear the stars on their helmets. Mm -hmm. um, then there's a, a pack called the blockers, and there's four people in that pack, and within that pack there are two pivots. Um, the pivots stay in the front, and they sort of control the pack. Mm -hmm. um, the pack has to skate all together, all around the, on the track. Um, like they can't really separate. Mm -hmm. um, the jammers start in the back, and this is sort of hard to explain. The jammers you have start to be, like, in the back. Pushed forward, right? Well, the jammers are basically racing through the pack to score the points. Mm -hmm. So they they go around, they get through the pack once, and um, that figures out who's lead jammer. Mm -hmm. And lead jammer can call off the game at any time. That's her, that, so you kind of want lead jammer because it's an advantage. Um, the second time they go through the pack, they're actually scoring points. And the scoring points by um, passing team members, it's like lapping, the opposite right? team members. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you're like trying to like hold each other back and everything. So that's kind of like the. Well, your the opposing team is trying to stop the girl from scoring points, mm -hmm. whereas your team is trying to help you get through. Mm -hmm. So that's where all the fighting and the pushing uh, and the shoving and the craziness <laughs> goes on. <laughs> 
So you guys do it at the Shiners, right? Uh, nope, that's a, another league. Um, um, we play at JFK Coliseum in Manchester. Oh, so it's so kind of a hike for you, huh? Cause you're yeah, it is. Um, I was worried about the commute for a while, but I got so addicted it didn't bother me anymore. Right. I absolutely love The ride doesn't phase me one bit. It's because you're just getting all pumped up on the way up there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah. how did you start skydiving? That's a pretty interesting thing for you to get into. Yeah, uh, it's something <laughs> I, I'd always like fantasized about. I thought it would be such an amazing thing to do. But um, I was terrified of flying. I am terrified of flying still, believe it or not. And um, my cousin owns a drop zone. He's owned it for about five or six years now. And um, He's actually getting interviewed soon. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for that episode. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, he and my father and a bunch of my cousins all decided to go skydiving one day. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'll just go up and watch. You know, I knew where the drop zone was. So I drove up to watch, and when I got up there, I just got so much like slack from, <laughs> from everybody like why aren't you jumping your whole family's jumping why don't you try it and, and inside I'm going oh I want to do this I want to try this but I was terrified it's like sitting in the car waiting to go to yeah. the roller derby like oh, do I want to so, do I want to it's yeah like, it's, it's like the regret thing. point like, where am I going to do yeah. <laughs> and then I crossed the line and I just said I'm committed yes I'm going to do it and my whole family was like no she's not she's not going to do this <laughs> you know my cousin's even sitting there going um you know, once you get on the plane, you have to jump, right? And I said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I just did it. And it was, once I decided I was going to do it, it was the most amazing experience. Even well, on the plane, I was excited. Like, I, I can't believe I'm doing this. It was, I'm going for the first time awesome. ever in a week. Oh, really? Yeah, in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I figured, might as well. Balls to the walls, right? You should you only be coming once. to my place. Well, I am going afterwards, <laughs> but I figured, you know, my friends, my birthday, so they're like, let's just go. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm cool. going to jump out of a plane. Good. You know? Good. Whatever. Yeah. Because I guess, like, it's amazing. It's amazing. And the statistics experience. for it are like crazy. It's like 200, out of like 250,000 people have gone, three people have died. I mean, mm -hmm. that's less than car crashes. Yeah. Drinking and driving is bad. <laughs> But so you're also yeah. on your on the side when you're not a roller derby girl and mm -hmm. a skydiving junkie. What mm -hmm. do you do with your real life? I'm a freelance graphic designer. Cool. So and I actually I actually work for Skydive New England. I'm mm -hmm. their graphic designer, and um, I'm actually the head designer for the New Hampshire Roller Derby. Also fabulous. <laughs> actually, I love those posters. Yeah. You do a really good job. Oh, thank you. You guys should check out her website, generationcreations.com. Cool. You can see some of my freelance before. projects there. <laughs> yeah. So you'll see that yep. if you want to hire her, you need some stuff done, <laughs> you know where to go. Um, so what do you want to do next with everything? I mean, you're you're kind of like a live on the edge kind of girl right now. You have Ooh, any other plans? What's next on my list? Um, actually, just to just to get ahead in roller derby. Yeah. It 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 takes a long time to get where you want to be. Um, I've been doing it almost a year and a half now, and I'm still working towards becoming a really good roller derby player. <laughs> well, every, everybody has like, um, you know, there's an underground to pretty much everything that I see when I interview people. There's like a whole nother lifestyle. That's mm -hmm. why I interview people to see what the lifestyle is like for a lot of people that have no idea. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What would you say is like a big thing about the lifestyle of a roller derby girl? A derby girl? Yeah. There really isn't one. Um, you just have to love the sport, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have doctors on the team. We have lawyers. That's probably very good to have a doctor on the team. <laughs> yeah, it kind of <laughs> is, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, we have every kind of person. We have stay-at-home moms. Um, everybody's pretty much in their 30s. So it's kind of like, you know, Superwoman. It's like you have no Maybe idea. She walks I'm during the day sure. and you're like, wait, she's actually a roller derby girl during yep. the afternoons. Yep. It's a lot. It's, it, <laughs> it's, it's hard to explain, but... I mean, you feel powerful. You know, you feel like a woman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just really great. And the girls are great. The um, camaraderie between the girls is, is just amazing. You know, yeah, the, the even best like... The group of girls I ever met. That's amazing. Yeah. That's an awesome thing to be a part of, you know, just yeah. to feel a part of something, especially a team, just where you're yeah. a group. So what's one of the most well-known women that are there? Like, what are some of the names that if you drop, people are going to be like, I know her, I've seen her, <laughs> you know? I'm not sure. No, there's going to be a couple. There's none that are like, you know, the top ones that you hear, like legends of the team. Legends of our team. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like if you say somebody, everybody else is going to be like, what the hell? Yeah. Why didn't you say me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we don't want to drop any names okay. and hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> so you don't have any, um, did you think that, were you that kind of a, a kid that you were like always living on the edge doing that oh, kind no, of thing? Oh, no, no, no. I, I swear skydiving is what started it all. It just kind of jumped out of a plane, turned into a different person. Uh, basically, basically, <laughs> yeah. That's what, I mean. It really, it. I don't know what it was. It really opened my eyes to different things, and it almost proved to me that I can do whatever I want. So when you were a kid, you were very like reserved type. Oh yeah, I was. I was really shy. I was 
maybe a little bit of a dork in high school. <laughs> so was everybody. <laughs> Extremely shy. Um, I was picked on. Um, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't very fun in high school. High school's um, not very fun in general. No. But you know what's mm. funny? When I talk to the roller girls, almost, almost everybody on the team or in the leagues has a similar story or a similar background of, mm -hmm. of that sort. Um, a lot of girls were picked on. A lot of girls were quiet, reserved. And it was almost like we had to wait until we got into our 30s to really come out of our shell and well, my mom said that her 30s were the best years of her life. Really? Do you agree? I gotta, I gotta say, so far, I'm having a blast. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, know, I feel I like, really am. You know, and when you're a teenager, it kind of sucks because you're a teenager and have, being a teenager it's hard. just sucks. Yeah. And then you get to 20 and you, like, have no idea what you're doing in life. I have no idea yeah. still. You just kind of follow the crowd. Yeah, whatever. And just do whatever. Yep. And, like, hoping that it all works out. But, like, I feel like once you hit 30, it's like that pivotal point in your life. You're like, wait, mm -hmm. I'm 30. Like, I can do. You're invincible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You to At first, I was do. lost when I turned 30. I didn't know what I was doing in my life. Because, <laughs> like, society always tells you you have to be married, have to have kids. You know, and I was stuck mm -hmm. in that rut, like, oh, my God, I'm 30 years old, and none of that's happening. But I found other things to fall in love with, and I'm completely happy now. I love well, it. everything else comes after that. You know, you got to yeah. fall in love with yourself first. Yep. And then everything else follows. Yep. So um, one reoccurring thing that I do ask on this show a lot of the time mm -hmm. is um, if you could say something to a younger group of people, what would you say to them? Ooh, that would be a tough one. Um, the, probably don't be afraid to try something new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like jumping out of a plane? Like jumping out of, well, the, I'm not going to, you know. Do not go that, that, yeah. that far. <laughs> <laughs> don't go that far. But because uh, I don't want to, if something happens to you, I don't want you coming back to me. <laughs> but no, try, definitely don't think you can't do something. Um, if you want to do something, go for it. Just try it. You, you never know where it's, what it's going to lead to and where it's going to take you. You know that every single person that I've ever interviewed, because I do interview a lot of interesting people, mm -hmm. that's what they say. They're like, really? just do it. Because you're never going to get anywhere if you're not trying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody would get anywhere if yeah. they all just stayed the same, just did the same mundane thing every day. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Mean? yeah. So you really don't have any other ideals of what you want to get accomplished? Because, you know. In life in general? Yeah. Oh, geez. I don't know. Take one day at a time, right? <laughs> Try to have a good day every day, really. Mm. So besides jumping out of plane, what was another like life-changing event in your life? Um, roller derby. <laughs> <laughs> like what out of roller derby? Have you seen anything crazy? Have I seen anything? I mean, there are like injuries in that sort. Mm -hmm. There have been a couple. Um, but it's nothing out of the ordinary out of any other sport, I wouldn't think. Um, <laughs> we had a girl break her ankle. Um, her first day of practice, which is mm -hmm. really sad, I know, because, you know, we, she wasn't even, she just, like, stood the wrong way and mm. fell over and broke her ankle. So. She's probably not very sturdy in general. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. I know, I know. <laughs> but, I mean, we get small injuries, but nothing major. Nothing. Huh. I haven't had any major injuries. You know, because I'm not good when I say that. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard so many good things about going to see you guys. I still haven't gone to go see a game yet. Mm -hmm. I'm a terrible person, but I'm going to go see them because I heard that they're so tonight, much if you fun. Come watch. <laughs> I might. Yeah, come back. Well, I got the interview, yeah. but maybe I, pr I could try. Cool. cool. But um, so, uh, where do they come up with these names? Like, because you all get to come up with your own. Yeah, we all name. have a, a derby name. Um, my name came from Punky Brewster, actually, because it kind of sounds like it. Pixie Bruiser, Punky mm -hmm, Brewster. Mm -hmm. She's my idol when I was a kid. You kind of <laughs> look like her. You think so? Yeah, she's kind of gorgeous. Ponytail, yeah. Mismatched socks. Yep. You know. See, it's perfect. But, you just um, need one different roller. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but, um, yeah, I wanted something with a wing theme also to go along with skydiving and pixies oh, yeah. fly. So it kind of just all mishmash together. I think it works very well for you. Yeah. And You're my number pixie. is um, 14, which stands for 14,000 feet. Oh, why is that when you jump yep. out? Mm -hmm. You jump at 14,000 feet. Amazing. So, I can't wait. Yeah. So a lot of the girls in the league, they all have significant names and numbers. They're pretty entertaining, actually. Some of them are, are hysterical. <laughs> we have uh, some funny names are like uh, Ivana B. Vicious. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> I don't like that name. Uh, we have Hazel Smut Crunch. Um, who else is good? And Raging Grace. Ooh, like nice. a lot, of, a lot of really cool names. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, creative. I feel like that would be probably one of the best parts about it, just to pick your yeah, name. Yeah, it's fun. You have to. Um, the way they do a name is you have to make a commitment to the league. You have to at least be in eight practices, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like your rite of passage. Like, okay, you're committed. You want to do this. You can register your name now. And um, there is a, a national registry so that nobody in the country can have the same name as you. Hmm. So you have to pick out a name, send it to the registry. They have to approve it, and then you get it. Interesting. Yep. So it's like a big deal. It's like naming yourself, you know, because yeah. your parents name you and you have no, no right <laughs> over that, you know, and you're like, ah, oh, damn, I'm just stuck with this forever. 
Yeah, it's I mean, you can't change it, but it really <laughs> does. Well, it was it was interesting when I first uh, got the name because everybody calls me Pixie now. Mm -hmm. So uh, after a while, I stopped answering to Jenna <laughs> because I'd hear Jenna and I think they'd be at talking to somebody else. Your mom must oh, be wait. a little bit upset about oh, that. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just That's a nickname. Not what I, need. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's funny. It's cute though. It's cool. So. Um, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one sister. Is she younger than you? She's older. She's she lives older? out in California. Oh, yeah? What yep. part? Um, she's kind of all over the place right now. I think she's um, moving towards Santa Cruz right now. Cool. Towards that area. Is she doing anything crazy? Um, she's not too crazy. She's a yoga instructor. That's awesome. Yeah. So she's really into it's that. Very pleasant. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you can see the contrast between the two of us, <laughs> yoga and roller derby. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to have the it's best of both worlds. Yeah, you know, it's great. Thinking She's doing yang. really well out there, though. Cool. Well. So is there anything about you that isn't really obvious that you would like people to know about you? Um, well, basically, I'm, I'm a kind of quiet and shy kind of person, <laughs> I think, Which above all the crazy. other crazy things that I do, you know. So deep down inside, you're just deep a down. shy, I'm just a shy, shy girl. girl. <laughs> well, yeah. do you read? No, no. Is that no. your thing? No. What, what else do you like to do besides that stuff? Um, Occupy. It's your really time. art. I really get into art, mm -hmm. illustration, graphic design. I'm constantly on the computer. Do you have any uh, inspirations? Oh, I do. Um, Sorry. One of my inspirations is Frida Kahlo. Is I really that? like her art. Uh, she's a Mexican artist. Mm -hmm. Um, her drawings were really uh, raw and real. And I, they weren't like, a lot of them weren't really very pleasant to look at, mm -hmm. but that's why I like them, because they're raw and they, they um, like disturbing show or? emotion. Uh, sometimes, some people can see it as disturbing. Huh. But like when she was in pain, you could really see that she was in pain through her paintings. Huh. And uh, it was really interesting, I really like her work. So is that your medium, is graphic? You don't really do anything else? Or? Yeah, just graphic design, illustration. Did you go to school for that? Yep, I went to UMass Amherst. Four oh, years I did too. For graphic design. Not four years. No. <laughs> no. It wasn't my scene. Stay in school. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta find your niche, that's it. Yeah. So, UMass Amherst, how was that? It was fun. It was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a good experience, definitely. I went experience. there too, and I met a lot of awesome people. I worked for the uh, catering company there. Oh, okay. And we were, the one guy that I'll never forget, it. Uh, I'll never forget him, I don't remember his name, but he was talking about how he graduated in probably like 70-something. He was talking about how they used to go like streaking through the quad and stuff. And I was like, I thought we were crazy these days. Obviously, I've been missing out on so it's much. It's all the same. <laughs> they did that when I was there. I didn't see any streaking. <laughs> no? I missed the entire oh, thing. Oh, jeez. They've, they've been doing that. For, it's like the same thing every year. <laughs> it never ends. That's funny. Uh, just a bunch of naked people running through <laughs> campus. It's all right. It's normal. I don't want to reveal my age, but that was 10 years ago. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, or it's, more. Still, it's still pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. Do you Fine. feel connected to the school still? I actually don't. Mm -hmm. I think I've, you know, I've been there, done that, moved on sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it was, the it was thing a while about ago. Amherst is that people are always like, oh, big, huge party school. And I'm like, eh, not really. I didn't see yeah. it as being that no. big. You know what I mean? Now that I'm the age that I am. I look back and I think it definitely was. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit too much, I thought. Mm. But I think that I think that's just being in your twenties. That's right. just what people do. Just being crazy. They just party and they're you know, their first time away from home they go crazy and mm -hmm. I did the same thing. <laughs> now I've slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, gotten involved in other things, positive things, but yeah. So would you say that you think that everything happens for a reason? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Where's one yeah. point that I you like actually that. felt that? Jeez, I you know I always kind of felt that, yeah. Like certain circumstances in my life, things that happen, I think everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So even when you're down in the dumps, you know that there's a reason to just continue yes. on. Yes, unfortunately, it stinks <laughs> to be there. It stinks to be at the bottom because I've been there, and um, I've definitely learned by being at the bottom, you can, you can work your way up. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to get through it, but once you do, you yeah. just kind of go. Nuts, like I did. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, my friend said something one time. She was taking like a philosophy class, and she was talking about um, this this um, concept of a painting. And there's just like this beautiful painting with these people having such a great time near water, and there's trees, and there's beautiful shadows, and the whole picture just comes to life when you look at it. But the picture wouldn't be the same without the shadows. Like mm -hmm. if you only knew that one dark spot, and that was yeah. all you knew, yeah. and you didn't have that, then the picture wouldn't be as striking because right. it wouldn't have so many elements to it. It's like you need that darkness in your life to appreciate yeah. when it's light again. You're like, oh yeah. yeah, wait a second, this is awesome. Well, that's what motivated me. Um, <laughs> that's what motivated me 
to uh, to do all these things. Actually, it was I I hate, I hate to admit it, but it happens. You go through a depression, and once I started getting out of it, and I did that one skydive, that's when I realized like things need like things needed to change and how positive things can come out of something really bad. Mm -hmm. You know, and I never would have done all these things I'm doing now if, if I hadn't gone through that depression. Right. Interesting. So what about the whole jumping out of the plane? What was that feeling that you got as soon as you jumped out of the plane? Um, it was really interesting because you felt so tiny and like so insignificant because when you're above the earth like that and you're actually feeling the wind in your hands and on your face, it, it was just like the most eye-awakening experience. Like you feel so tiny but yet so powerful in the same sense. Because you, you know, know that you're like falling to death but you know you're not going <laughs> to die. You're like, wait a second, I'm invincible. Well, it's just such a crazy thing to do, and to think that I actually attempted it and did it was, was it's pretty amazing. And then to see the world at that view mm -hmm. is just, it just changes your, your way of thinking. Not to take things so seriously and mm -hmm. enjoy what you have in life and, and really play. The have little fun. things, like <laughs> yourself. <laughs> yeah, because this world is uh, yours to the taking, you know, it's very yeah. short if you think about it. It's yep. over in a blink of an eye. Yep. You so know? enjoy your time that you have here. Exactly. Go crazy. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's why I was, I was telling my mom that I was going skydiving in Las Vegas, and she's mm -hmm. like, you know, you should just do it around here so you feel safer. And I was like, I'm going to do it here, too, so that I can see both. Like, I want to <laughs> see all yeah. of Nevada and just, like, jump out of a plane and see that and yep. then see the difference between here and there. Because I know it's, like, desert. I'm going to see so much desert yeah, from there. Beautiful. And then from up here, I'll see all the trees. I just know it's going to be a totally different experience. So yeah. why wouldn't I do both, you know? Right. It's enjoying yeah. that experience on two totally different levels and two different playing fields, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. like Skydive New England is uh, about 60 miles west of Portsmouth, I think, or not even, maybe it's less than that. Um, but you can, you can see the ocean when you jump. That's amazing. It's really neat. Yeah, you can see a, a whole bunch of New England. It's so beautiful. No wonder why your cousin, I can't wait to do that interview. Yeah. He's going to be he's really gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So... About the league, um, who's running this and how's it how's it go? It's actually skater owned and operated. Mm, we run so. ourselves. Um, it's a very tough job, um, but we, we get her done, <laughs> sort of Clearly. thing. Uh, when you join, they ask you to, to help out in some certain aspect. Um, we have a whole list of jobs that people can do. And um, luckily, a lot of the people, um, they're, they are they their home life or you know their specialty can go into the league in some sort of way. Like I'm a graphic designer, so I do all the posters and advertising for them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the head of the art department and I coordinate all the advertising efforts along with uh, the PR department. Interesting. So yeah, it's a it's a, a ton of work, a ton of work, but and so it's, it's all it's all volunteer work. You don't get paid or anything like that. But so it's, it's like a totally side worth job it. that yeah. you pay yourself with with the gratification. Yeah, the of gratification enjoying. and being on the track and. Having the time of your life, basically. Awesome. But you put a, you've put a real lot into it. That's the only thing that um, is tough. So if people were willing to put in the effort, like you have to tell them that they're going to be committed to this. That's like a a, yeah. com a big commitment. Yeah, it's not huge. Like it's not anything you wouldn't be able to handle. It's just we'd like you to be involved in, in the league in some other way. So what is that like once a month or and then? Um, it depends. In the art department, um, especially during batting season, I'm busy every day, almost every day, with emails and um, coordinating things and, and stuff like that. Um, and then you know they'll have like, like let's say the recru recruitment department. Um, they work a lot too, but they have recruitment night once a month. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a commitment for them. Um, there's bout production. There's a whole bunch of girls that actually put the bouts on and uh, coordinate everything, and that's a huge job. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the, it is a lot of work, but it's not anything that you can't handle, I don't think, anyway. And I love it so much, it doesn't bother me one well, bit. Well, I think that <laughs> anything that's like, yeah, passion, you know, yeah. it's the work, it's not really work, it's just, right. you know what I mean? You I just can't do believe it. that you guys don't make any money off of it, though, from like advertising yourselves and no. like creating. I mean, we're trying, like we're getting there. <laughs> we're trying. You should, you should. But all the money that we make from ticket sales and everything goes towards our practice space mm. and, and some, you know, things that we need to put on the boat. Right. Um, it's very expensive to rent the rinks and and um, get all the girls coordinated to be able to be on the track all at once. I kind of hate that everything revolves around money, but yeah. what are you going to do? So basically we just bout so we can keep skating. Right. Basically. The extra money. Um, I don't even know if we have extra money. <laughs> but uh, we like to do get involved in some charity work at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so if we do have something extra, we'll... we'll help out somewhere somehow. I think that anybody that has a business, any kind of business, should always yeah. do charity because yeah. there's no reason why they couldn't. Yeah. It's tax write-off and <laughs> everything, yeah. everything, it's, you're 
quit paying it for it, you know? Like, mm -hmm. if there's something that you can contribute to somebody, why wouldn't you, you know, yeah. if you have it? Yeah. Because there are people that are way less fortunate that cannot roll a derby for re reasons mm -hmm. and whatnot, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So who's the youngest? You can only do it when you're 21, right? Um, I think the youngest right now is maybe 23. Mm -hmm. um, and then we might have a couple, like, 25-year-olds. And then after that, it's all 30 to about 45, I think, is the oldest. <laughs> so Interesting. Yeah. Yep. So what else age. about the league is there that people don't really know about? Um, hmm, what can I say? It's growing. It's definitely growing. Um, made a comeback in about the year 2000, 2001. Um, it started out in Texas, just one small league. And, uh, and now it's, you, can have, you can find a league in every state. There's like, I think in Massachusetts there's four right now. Um, New Hampshire there's three. There's a fourth one coming. Um, so it's growing. It's growing. We're hoping to get on TV someday. <laughs> I think you definitely you will. Know, I mean, you know. we'll get to see some of the footage in a little bit, yep. um, which is pretty exciting, too. <laughs> um, so we also have a book that you've illustrated, if you want to show everybody mm -hmm. this. Yep. Um, this is an illustration project that I worked on, uh, The Grumpy Grouchy Girl. <laughs> <laughs> this is a book that I illustrated. Um, we're just starting to, to promote this. So um, it was just recently completed. Uh, we have the website at yep. the bottom of the screen right now. So <laughs> if you guys want to take a look at that and uh, check out the Grumpy Grouchy Girl, you're more than welcome to. Um, I know it was written by a mother and a daughter, mm -hmm. and you worked on it with them. Mm -hmm. And I think the story w was based off of um, the woman's daughter. Which is yeah, who's actually my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie about it. Everybody can know. My mom and my sister. It's actually about my sister, who is a grumpy, grouchy girl. <laughs> Still to this day? No. She has a boyfriend. She's happy now. It's weird. Oh, really? It's weird how that does that to you. Me oh, do. boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, anything you would like to say that we haven't touched on yet? Um, I think that's about it. Yeah? yeah. Again, if you uh, want to try something, don't be afraid to do it. Never. You never know where it's going to lead you. I know. If I hadn't skydived, I wouldn't be in Derby, and Derby is a new love of my life, so go out like there and do it. Everything happens for a reason. You try yep. one thing, <laughs> jump out of a plane, something else is going to happen. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to Lifestyles, the Interesting and Infamous. We're going to cook. I forgot to mention what I'm cooking for you. I'm making black and blue burgers. Oh, excellent. And <laughs> in-your-face potato salad. So everybody be excited about it because it's the best potato salad you'll ever have and some delicious burgers to go with it. So, Jenna, thank you very much for being on thank the show. I really, me. really appreciate it. Thank Tell you Tell Derby much. Girls I said See you hi. on the track soon. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs>
Once our bacon's cut up, we're gonna put it into our 350 degree preheated oven. And while our bacon's cooking, we're actually gonna cut up some cucumbers, just to add a little bit of freshness to this in your face potato salad. We're also gonna be incorporating some fresh dill, so we're gonna cut some of that up. Now feel free to use dried dill if you want, just cause it stores longer, but fresh dill is gonna have that super fresh taste that's gonna accentuate the cucumbers and just make this the most in your face potato salad you've ever had in your whole life. So next I'm gonna mix my shallots, dill, and sour cream and mayonnaise in a bowl to make our dressing. After we make our delicious fresh dressing, we're gonna add it to our cucumbers and our potatoes. Now that we've got all of these ingredients together, we're gonna mix them all up. And then we're gonna salt and pepper them to taste. All right, now for our blue cheese stuffed burgers. So to make little burgers, we're only taking like a handful of meat and we're gonna flatten it out. And then we're gonna take a piece of cheese, and put it in the middle. And then wrap our burger around it. We're gonna take our ground beef patties that are filled with blue cheese and actually dust them with our blackened Cajun seasoning. I've preheated a frying pan to a medium high heat and we're going to take our patties and put them on there and squish them down so that they're gonna be not a meatball shape anymore but a patty shape. We're gonna cook the patties on each side for a couple of minutes until when you give them a light press, they give a little bit, then you know. Once you get your patties to a desired temperature, take them out of the pan and put them on the bun. Now we're gonna to top these black and blue burgers with a little bit of lettuce and tomato. Now that our bacon's done, we're gonna put it on paper towels to let the grease drain out of it. Now that we have our drained, delicious, crispy bacon, we're gonna put it on top of our potato salad. All right, I hope you enjoy these delicious black and blue mini burgers and the in-your-face potato salad. And thank you, Jenna, for coming on the show and showing us what the Derby lifestyle is all about. And from everybody here at Lifestyles of the Interesting and Infamous, we hope you have a deliciously interesting day.